So when we look at this thing, we understand like a golf course that life is unpredictable. A golf course, no matter how beautiful it is, is very unpredictable. For those of you that have watched golf at any point in time, the professionals that are getting paid millions of dollars find themselves at times in an unpredictable situation. As good as they are, it gets rough out there. And you have to be able to continue in the unpredictable things because life, like golf, is unpredictable. You wake up one day, you had two or three shots, part one, part two, part three, and then now you get to the fourth one, fifth one, now it's a little bit more difficult. And you say, God, why are you letting this happen? No, this is just life. But he's giving you the tools to get out of it. You just have to use them and practice with them. And sometimes you need an instructor to show you what to do. Because sometimes you'll face something in life that you can't figure this out on your own. So the thing about it is if I want to get better at this game called golf, I need to practice. I need to practice. If you're going to get better at this thing called life now, you're going to have to practice the presence of God. You're going to have to practice knowing the word of God. So when you run into a situation, you know exactly what to do. Right, am I making any sense here? Amen. Now I know I may be saying the same thing five different ways, but I want to make I want to make sure that everybody gets what I'm saying. Amen. So far, part of practicing is sometimes you have to go to the driving range. Amen. And you pay X amount of dollars, it's not a lot, and you get a basket of balls. This is not designed. Now, these balls are just practice balls. These are not the real expensive ones that you buy. This is not Tyler's. This is not the real expensive. You don't buy them yet. <laughs> you don't practice on them. You only break those out after you have, after you have developed a skill set because those balls are not cheap. See, what God has put on the inside of you is not cheap. That's it. Don't That's waste it, it practicing. <laughs> When you get ready to make a move in life, make sure that you're aware of how and what you're doing. So you have to practice. So you get these balls out here, and, and then you just begin to practice and practice. And you're practicing your grip, you're practicing your swing. All of these things are going on while you're doing this. Watch this while nobody's really paying you no attention. Do you know how we really grow? We grow backstage when nobody's paying you attention. That's it. That's it. We grow while we're at the driving range where nobody's really paying you no mind. See, it's how you do there that's going to determine when you get on the course. Teenagers, see, see, all of this time that you've been home, you've been on the driving range practicing. You really haven't tapped into life good yet because you're not on your own. You're on the back side of the desert practicing, David, but there's going to be a challenge when you come from the back side of the desert because God's going to bring you to the forefront and you are going to face a Goliath. Yeah. Daniel, you are going to face a situation in a hole with hungry lions. But what you do backstage in preparation will get you ready when you get on stage and people are watching you to see how you perform. Watch this under pressure. Because this game called golf can be very, it can be a whole lot of pressure. And the better you get, the more pressure. Because now you got other folks watching you, and you got sponsors watching you, and you got putting people, people putting money behind you, and, and they're buying you clubs, and they're doing this, and they're doing that. See, now you got pressure on you because when you're good at something, people want to be a part of it. But you have to have the right kind of mind because the blessings of God are heavy and weighty. And if, you don't, if you're not mature enough to handle that, you'll crack under the pressure. That's why you have to get all this stuff done when you're practicing on the driving range and when you're going to the golf course and nobody's really paying you any attention. That's why you get all of that out of you. That's why God's working on pride. That's why sometimes he'll allow you to get in a sand trap so he can work that pride out of you because you're so used to being good at everything. God says, okay, I'm going to put you in a position where you're really going to have to trust me. Sand trap. Am I making any sense? Now, not only do you have sand traps, but you have what they call the rough. And it's rough in the rough. In the rough are places where you have weeds and, and deep grass and things of this nature. We, did, we didn't put all of that up here, but we had some, had some examples of it and where, where the ball gets stuck in the rough, deep in the rough. And sometimes your game is delayed because you have to find your ball. 
Because if you're playing by the rules, you can't just throw another ball out there just because you can't find them. No, no, baby. You're going to have to find the ball that you played. <laughs> now, some people are really sneaky. They put, they put some balls in their pocket with a hole in the bottom of it. And so when somebody's not watching, they slip the ball and kick, oh, there's my ball right there. You do have cheaters in this life. You do have people that will not play this game right. Don't get jealous if they cheat on the scorecard. Because you're not going for that type of success. Because that type of success does not last. Because it will find you out after a while that you've been cheating the whole time. Because cheaters can't handle pressure. But when you're doing this thing the right way, and you're handling it the right way, you don't have to cheat on it because watch this. As God begins to grace you and bless you, you'll come out of some hard things that people say, how did you do it? The cheaters can't really tell you how they did it other than the fact that they cheat. But I need to hear a testimony from somebody that went through the process. That went through the process, didn't cheat, but had to go through the process. I was in debt past my eyelids. No, I didn't go out and sell drugs to help. I know I didn't go slide up and down a pole at a club. No, I didn't do any of those kind of things. I just had to go step by step, line upon line. I had to realize that I can't overspend anymore. And I had to start taking some time and maybe working some extra jobs so I can take that money and chip, chip away at my debt little bit by little bit. And it took me some time to watch this because it took me some time to get in this mess. So it's going to take me some time to get out. So that's how I made it out. I couldn't go out to eat with everybody. I couldn't go party. I couldn't do any of those kind of things. My kids couldn't get certain things because I was getting out of debt. The Bible talks about oh, no man nothing but to love him. Because when you're in debt, your attitude changes. When you're in debt, you become mean and nasty. Come on, talk to me. When you're in debt, you go on vacation and when the kids ask you for a teacher, no, I ain't got no money for that. You are in the rough right now. How many of you know what I'm talking about? I've been there before, but we didn't have enough money. Our kids never knew that one time that we were uh, financially challenged. They did not know that. And we would go on vacation from time to time, and they want to buy this because kids don't know anything. They just ask, 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 ask. I'm like, hey, my friend, hey. Come on, you parents know what I'm talking about here. They want a t-shirt. They want, they want this. They want the little thing that does with the lights and all those other stuff. Only for them to lose it. one time and we said, listen, the blessing is we here. You're about halfway there now. You, you're, about, you're a little bit over halfway, halfway, just a little bit over. Now the course, life is starting to get a little bit, little bit more difficult right now. It's getting a little bit more difficult. And now you're having to really focus and pay attention to what you're doing. Now you have to start calling up all the different scriptures that help you when you're getting frustrated. Because life will frustrate it will make you so angry. Watch this, and at times you'll even question God. Because you'll say, Lord, you made this course so beautiful. Why are you letting my ball go in the water? Why didn't you let the angel just kind of blow at it? But he's teaching you something. He's teaching you about endurance. He's teaching you about He's teaching you about persistence. He's teaching you because you're going to have to talk to somebody that 
don't have it all together that are about to take their own life. And they think that life has just handed them a bad deal. And you say, listen, baby, I was on that course too. Matter of fact, you know the folk that didn't get out the way fast enough? That was me. I wasn't too far ahead of you. I was just in the rough myself a year ago, a week ago, two months ago, five years ago. I was in the rough where I couldn't even find my ball. And it cost me a stroke because I had to play another ball. And it cost me to do that. So my score, see, watch this. In this game, golf, it's not the highest score that wins, but the lowest. Unlike football, unlike basketball, unlike soccer, the highest, hockey, the highest score gets you the trophy. But in this game, the lowest score, lowest score, you got to humble yourself. Under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due season. So, how God blesses you by the lower you get, not the higher you get. Am I making 